Hey folks, Joe Panateri here, Editorial Director of Nine Lives Media. Thank you so much for joining us, and also thanks to those of you who are visiting our websites as well, the Vargai, MSP Metro, and Talking Cloud. A big thanks to the uh, team over at Intronus for sponsoring today's discussion. We are going to bust the seven cloud backup myths and make sure you are in position to grow your revenue. Before we get into the actual content of today's event, let me walk you through the user interface just a little bit so that you're familiar with how to navigate anything. Uh, everything. To begin with, you're going to notice a toolbar at the bottom of your console. Those widgets allow you to open and close widgets on your screen. For example, if you need to adjust your volume, just click on that media player widget. When you're done, click on it again, and that's going to hide your media player window. You can also feel free to customize your user interface. The way you do that is you can move windows around by dragging on the title bar or resize your windows by clicking on the lower right-hand corner of any window. We also invite you to get social. If you use the Twitter feature in this, it's going to tweet out the fact that uh, you're on a uh, uh, MSP Mentor webcast, and also it'll tweet out your comment as well. So feel free to do that. So feel free to do that at any time during the webcast. So, again, the topic for today: bust seven cloud backup myths and grow your revenue. Um, I do want to art articulate the fact that. This is definitely an ongoing dialogue. You may have questions during this webcast. Feel free to send in those questions. But also, if you have questions maybe a day from now, maybe a week from now, drop me an email. I'll be, I'll be happy to get back to you and or route your question to the most appropriate guest speaker. I'm just joe.panateri at penton.com. You should see that on your screen right now. And also, um, for those of you who know us uh, before the Penton Media acquisition uh, over at Nine Lives Media, that email account still works. So you can always reach me at my Nine Lives account as well. Um, you can also reach our team, you know, whether it's for the Vargai, Talking Cloud, or MSP Mentor. Uh, we've got Charlene O'Hanlon, Jessica Davis, and CJ Arlotta standing by for if you've got some news or business updates about your company. Maybe you've got questions about the industry. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to have you reach out to our team. So feel free to do that. So what are we going to cover today? Um, certainly, we're going to zero in on some of the biggest myths out there in the cloud backup market, and we're going to squash those myths, or as Intronus aptly put it, we're going to bust those myths. We're going to put an end to those myths. Um, we're going to focus in on growth opportunities for you, um, and certainly I want to make sure we cover questions throughout. Before we get into uh, the actual seven myths, uh, let me just share a few stats with you, and these stats come from two key areas. The first key area they come from is our Talking Cloud 100, which was just announced uh, a couple of weeks ago. The Talking Cloud 100 essentially lists the top 100 cloud service providers in the world, um, and you'll notice here that nearly 80% of those are now of those top 100 CSPs are now offering some type of cloud backup solution, uh, and nearly 70% are offering some sort of cloud storage. Uh, interesting sidebar on that stat: Intronus is actually one of those top 100 CSPs. And Intronus partners are also on the list, which is sort of a, a very interesting look at how the uh, next generation channel is emerging. You've got the, the first tier provider, Intronus, and then you've got the MSP or VAR as a partner working in with Intronus also showing up on this list. Um, separately, the top, one, the top 501 MSPs, managed service providers, 91% of them are using some form of managed storage and or BDR, and that's based on our annual uh, MSP Mentor 501 list. Um, and we also, I think the other myth out there it, um, in terms of our own data is there's a lot of myth in terms of, well, maybe this is only a small business opportunity. If you look at the stats here and the vertical markets here, you'll see that uh, there's plenty of opportunity for MSPs and bars to get in the market at any customer size and then go vertical. Um, so those are some of the quick stats from us. But let me turn the event over to the real experts, our two guest speakers. Thrilled to say we've got Matt Dubois with us from D2 Business Solutions as well as Neil Bradbury from Intronus. Let me just do a sound check. Matt, is your phone line open? Are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Thanks for having me. Fantastic, fantastic to have you here. And Neil, let me double check with you. Phone line open? Are you with us? I'm here, Joe. Great to have you both here. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy, busy day. We know you're both busy uh, building uh, really strong businesses out there. Hey, Matt, give me a little bit of background. Let's start with you first. Can you tell us a little bit about your company and your role at it? Absolutely. Uh, D2 Business Solutions uh, I co-founded in January 2008, and uh, we started simply with one uh, cloud solution, uh, and that was hosted desktops. We, uh, we've expanded our cloud offerings since then, um, to include cloud backup, email, spam filtering, 
uh, many other cloud services. Uh, in the past two years, it's been a lot easier to sell with uh, selling cloud than it was in 2008. So um, uh, we're, growing, we're growing fast right now, and it's, it's great. Fantastic. Congratulations on that. And by the way, congratulations on being so far ahead of the curve with, with desktop as a service. It's, it's, um, it's interesting. I'm actually out at an IT conference this week in Omaha with uh, several dozen MSPs, and they're all just scratching the surface and, and trying to figure out desktop as a service. And there you are in the market already for five years and also pushing into cloud backup. So great to have you aboard. We're going to uh, make sure we weave in some questions for you throughout the webcast. Um, well, actually, we have our first question coming in. It's from multiple attendees who are asking a very similar question about your vertical market focus. You mentioned on your slide HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, et cetera. So are you focused on health care primarily or, or financial services? Did you go vertical early on? Yeah, we typically focus on healthcare and uh, legal. Uh, we find that they find they actually see the value in the offsite backup and cloud services. Uh, they typically have the uh, revenues and mm -hmm. um, you know have the compliance. And they, typically, they just don't want to worry about it and you know want somebody to take care of it. And uh, yep. they looked up. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, congratulations on that. Let me jump it on over now over to Neil, and let's get a little bit of background, Neil, uh, both for you as well as for your company. Tell us a little bit about Intronus for attendees who are not familiar with the company, and then tell us about your role. Yeah, sure. Absolutely, Joe. Um, I'm going to actually reverse the order on you. Uh, so if anyone that doesn't know, my name is Neil Bradbury. I'm uh, the VP of Channel Development for Intronus. I'm also one of the co-founders that helped create uh, Intronus back in 2003. Um, I've been very fortunate to have multiple roles at Intronus, um, but my current role is really helping MSPs grow their business by leveraging uh, cloud backup and recovery solutions uh, that Intronus offers. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Intronus is the leader in cloud backup and disaster recovery for MSPs. Uh, our mission, as it has always been, is to help make MSPs more successful by delivering the world's best cloud backup solution for resellers who serve small and medium-sized businesses like D2, uh, Matt from D2 here on the webinar. We are 100% dedicated to serving the IT channel. We don't sell direct, and so we don't compete with you uh, in your business. Our backup solution offers highly secure data centers located in the U.S. and Canada, providing excellent reliability and security at no additional cost. We currently have over 2,000 partners worldwide and are backing up over 45,000 endpoints. We can continually invest in our technology Recently, we announced our spring release, which has many great enhancements, including virtual machine backup and availability for VMware. Thanks, Joe. Back to you. Fantastic. Well, actually, we've got a few questions for you already, Neil. Um, a couple of attendees want to know how long you've been working with MSPs, how long Intronus has been. I think you mentioned, Neil, the company was founded in 2003, so this isn't something like Intronus turned on the lights last week and started working with MSPs. You guys have been in and around the market for quite some time. We we have, Joe, and it's a great question. Our actual channel programs as they are today were actually defined by IT resellers and, and I, the IT channel uh, over the past many, many years. Um, we went channel only in 2009 and made a commitment uh, to the IT channel that we would not sell direct, um, and we haven't looked back. Um, if you see any of our storage growth or even revenue growth, um, it's been fantastic ever since we made that switch, and uh, partnering with the MSPs is, uh, is awesome. It's a great experience day to day. Fantastic, fantastic. Thanks, Neil. So here's what I want to do, attendees. Um, I want to push out a poll question to you, and then we're going to go through our seven myths. I figure we'll spend five to seven minutes on each myth. We'll take your questions. We'll answer your question, and we're going to bust those myths. We're going to make sure that it's clear to you that the myth truly is a myth and uh, it is not factual. Um, but before we do that, let's get a little bit better feel for our attendees and, and where you each are in this market. And the question is this, and if you could please uh, reply to this, it would be very helpful for me as I'm pulling data here. The question is, have you added cloud services to your portfolio or, off or offerings? Your three options here, no, I don't want to, and I don't want to offer cloud services, yet I was really intrigued by this webcast, so I showed up anyway. Um, or maybe it's number two, yes, and it's been a great decision so far. Um, or number three, yes, but we're not happy with the results. And uh, I'll clarify that a little bit. We're not happy with the results yet because we're going to make sure that we give you some uh, ideas on how to get better results if you're in that camp. So is it A, B, or C, folks? I'm still gathering some of the data here. Uh, and let me just make sure that we've compiled as much information as I can before I push out the results to you. And here are the results. Um, hey, you know what? We've got a good audience that's succeeding here. You know, we're at nearly 
um, we're at nearly 70% that are doing it and saying, you know what, it's a good decision for me. Congratulations, audience. It's great to hear. On the one hand, I'm not really surprised, uh, given that uh, our readership spans the Varguy MSP Mentor and Talking Cloud, and, and a lot of attendees, I'm sure, uh, have been on the cloud wave for a while. But then we've got this other 20% plus the other 12%. You know, yes, but I'm not happy with the results, which hopefully we can help along the 20% there. Um, and then, uh, excuse me, the 20% there, and then the 12% who, uh, who just aren't sure if this is an opportunity and maybe came to this webcast to see if, if we could convince them otherwise. Um, and Neil, in your experience, as you're looking at these numbers, nearly 70% are, are happy with the decision. Say I'm a partner and I'm, I'm, and I'm working with Intronus. How, is it, how long is it before I start to feel good about that decision of going cloud? Is it, is it an overnight feel good, you know, that instant success, or do you've got to work at it a little bit? Well, I like to think it's an instant success, uh, but most of the time uh, it is. A lot of people have realized that they should go cloud, and you know, Intronus is there to help. But um, I do think you know there is that small percentage where they kind of the proof is in time. You know, so it mm -hmm. takes a, them a couple of months to realize, okay, hey, this is actually a really good idea. You know, backup is probably the easiest one that you can add as your first cloud service. Uh, and then they're like, okay, I'm hooked. What else can I add? And then you start to see them kind of grow their their cloud-based portfolio. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's a perfect transition actually to Matt. You know, Matt, I think you mentioned you launched your business in 2008. Is that correct? That's correct. So when you launched the business, um, did you have any hesitations when you were going cloud? Did you, you know, was it an instant success? Or were there real moments where you had to rethink things and almost wonder, God, am I going to succeed here? Uh, definitely not an instant success. Um, it took a few years for it to become an overnight success. Mm -hmm. um, so we like to joke around about. Um, it's what I found is, uh, you know, I see that people there's 12 percent that that don't need to or or want to offer cloud services. Um, definitely all cloud solutions and solution providers uh, are not created the same. And mm -hmm. uh, if, if you have a bad experience with one, it can definitely sour you. And I've I've seen I've seen a lot of a lot of that, uh, you know, in, in my findings and talking to people that. You know, they they started off with a. It's still relatively in its infancy, cloud computing. So there's still not a lot. There's still a lot of not good uh, providers and partners out there. And but I think they're they're washing away, and you know, the, the dominant yeah. players are, are are coming to the surface now. I would agree with you. I think one of the challenges for the market is so much venture capital and private equity money has flowed into the cloud market that we've got a lot of pretenders still in there. We've got a lot of companies that are not even, you know, not close to profitable. Maybe they're at a huge burn rate and maybe their uh, their their focus on MSPs and or VARs is not mature yet. And we've seen a little bit of a shakeout. Some companies certainly going away, some services certainly being turned off, and I think you got to be careful there in terms of uh making sure you're researching companies that are going to be around. Um and, and speaking of financial models, I think that brings us to the first m the first myth. Um and what exactly that means for our MSPs. Myth number 1, free cloud services are as good as paid. Now, um I've suffered through this as myself when we launched our business in 2008. I looked under every stone for every free service I could find to get us going at a very low cost. And roughly six months in, I discovered free can be really expensive. Um, over at Intronus, Neil, similar experiences with your MSPs? Are, are, they, are they figuring out that free can be quite expensive uh, and, and it's better to get going with a paid service? <laughs> Absolutely they are. Um, you know, I think as you said, you know, all services um, – you know, aren't created equal. And, you know, I'll take a minute here to kind of address some, some of the stuff that's on the slide here. But, you know, the three main uh, issues that you can really uh, look at with free services versus paid is, you know, the security, um, recovery time objective, or the time to get the data back for the client, and then also regulations. You know, as Matt had said, you know, he's in the legal and the medical um, space. You know, there's a lot of regulations that, that you need to look at as you're offering uh, cloud solutions um, to those businesses. Um, Businesses also need to understand that you know, when they're putting their data in the cloud, that they really need to maintain ownership. Um, there's a lot of cloud services out there that are free, but they're using your data, they're mining your data, and they're using it for their own gain. Um, I challenge you know, a lot of small businesses read the fine print of some of the, the SLAs and some of the end user license agreements for those services. Um, for, for Matt and other MSPs that are on the line, you know, it's important for them to articulate uh, to their customers why they should buy you know, cloud backup through their IT, the IT firm. Um, if they do have a disaster, how long will it take to recover? 
you know, I always say it this way, you know, if you pair an experienced IT firm that knows their environment with a solution that's built for their environment, uh, you'll ensure that that business gets back up and running faster uh, if a disaster was to occur, as opposed to, say, you know, the free services that are out there. Um, another differentiator, uh, you know, the regulations. Uh, IT providers must educate their small businesses um, on, you know, regulations such as HIPAA, in the healthcare space, a lot of changes have happened this year in 2013. Uh, and you know, as an IT provider being kind of that expert or educating the small business will kind of um, set them apart uh, as uh, opposed to kind of the free offerings that are out there. Um, so to kind of go over it again, you know, the, the three things that you know an IT reseller or an IT provider can differentiate is you know the security, the recovery time objective, and and then really the regulations uh, that you're helping that small business meet. Understood. Neil, thank you for that. Hey, Matt, from your experience, when, when you started the business, or even more recently, did, did you dabble in any of the free solutions out there? And, and if so, what were your learnings? Or the flip side of the question, did you avoid free solutions at all costs? Uh, and, and if so, why? We definitely uh, looked into some of the free services, and uh, what we found was to just lack the features. Um, mm. A big part of you know growing and looking at these features automate certain processes? Can you rely on it? If you're, if you're trying to make some of these free services work for you and you're spending a lot of time to, to tweak it and really kind of push it out of its, its, uh, its bounds, you, you know, is it really saving you any money with all the time you're putting into it and how much risk is involved there? So I'd say features are a, a big um, you know, uh, priority for us and um, you know, it saves us a lot of time. Yep. And Matt, I apologize. Your phone line is breaking up just a little bit. So if you could check your uh, your bar signal for us, um, and uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll keep you involved in the webcast. But if there's anything, you can uh, just double check on the webcast signal there on your on your or your cell phone signal. I just wanted to double check on that. But um, I did pick up 90% of what you're saying, and I'm sure our audience did as well. So thank you for that. Uh, myth number two. Let's move on to that. Consumer cloud services work fine for businesses. You know, it, it's an interesting situation right now with the quote unquote consumerization of IT. You know, we're all getting used to trying things at home and then bringing them to the office. And you think about something like bring your own device. I think bring your own device in some companies is now turning into bring your own cloud where employees are showing up with their own cloud solutions and or apps, and, and suddenly uh, the small business owner or the mid-sized enterprise with the CIO, they're getting concerned about this stuff. You know, they, they can't manage it because it was a, an account opened by an employee. They can't uh, get their arms around the fact that there are multiple consumer uh, cloud services now running within their organization. You don't have single sign-on. You don't have a single dashboard to manage it all. And... Um, what looked like a great idea from day one suddenly uh, suddenly becomes quite complex and can really be a, a big a ball of hair for your company. Um, I'm wondering if you're seeing more and more of this trend, Neil, or less and less of this trend as you think about um, not only your, the MSP wins you're seeing, but also the types of customers they're bringing. Is the consumer effect still out there, and what are you seeing? No, I definitely see the the consumer effect, you know, in, in the day to day, and you know, even MSPs ask me as as we talk, you know, um, what do I do? Or you know, they brought me this consumer solution. Uh, what solutions do I build in my business? So, from my perspective, I always look at it as it, as an advantage. You know, if the consumer solutions are kind of um, articulating the need, now it really comes back to the MSP to have a solution or a product that they can kind of offer uh, to their small businesses to kind of meet that need so that the small business doesn't go back to uh, the consumer offering. You know, many mm -hmm. of the points on why, you know, a free service is not good for business is kind of the same as the consumer grade, right? You know, uh, consumer grade, or their consumer offerings, you know, Joe, and I'm sure you use them, they're great for storing personal files, family pictures, um, but not business files. You know, uh, some of the questions are, you know, where's the data stored? Do, you, do they have any idea? Is it encrypted? Um, who has access to the encryption key? And these are even great questions to ask you know, other, other channel vendors that are out there when you're backing up uh, business critical data. Um, and again, I know I mentioned it on the first slide, and you'll probably hear me keep mentioning it, you know, uh, consumer offerings and HIPAA. You know, uh, a lot of things uh, have to be taken into account for a business to be HIPAA compliant if they're storing medical data. So um, I would say you know, pointing out these differences um, as, the as the customer asks about their consumer solution, hey, can I do this in business? 
um, articulating a lot of these differences between the two is uh, kind of a way for the IT reseller to win. Yeah. You know, the other great thing, Neil, I think, personally, is it, it's an inter interesting dynamic to the MSPs out there. I think managed services initially was a tough sell because the, the end customer, you have to explain it to them. You have to explain the value. I think cloud services is going to be an easier sell ultimately because of the trend you mentioned, Neil, the, the fact that these, consumer, these, these small business owners and users are already using their own personal or consumer cloud services. Now as the MSP, you walk in the door, and now you're trying to make the switch, get them onto the corporate type solution, um, but you don't have to sell them on the concept of cloud. That's already sold. They're already ready to go cloud. They just don't know which solution to choose. Um, and, and, and let me jump it over, over to Matt. Um, Matt, I'm wondering, are, are you, when you go into your customer settings, do you actually have to take inventory of the cloud services the customers are already using and then try to get them on over to the corporate solutions? Yeah, often we do. Um, I'm going to agree with uh, what Neil said. That you know, the consumer cloud services have made selling the cloud a lot easier. Um, the, the biggest um, obstacle is they feel a, a sense of security with um, the cloud, the consumer cloud services, and um, really showing them that it's a false sense of security, you know, backing up to the cloud that you, know, you shouldn't save your QuickBooks or any of your database files there, even though it's good for your family pictures and music, that, you know, it's a false sense of security for your business. Yeah, I understood. Understood. Hey, let's work in a question, actually. And, and attendees, if you have additional questions, feel free to send them in. Here's one from Jim. Uh, and Neil, this relates to your point about consumer cloud services and where the data is stored. Uh, Jim wants to shift that, that question a little bit over to the business side, and, and particularly to Intronus. Um, and, and Jim says, hey, I, he, he believes that Intronus is only offering uh, the, the storage solutions in Canada and U.S. at the moment. Do you have any plans uh, to be hosted over in Europe? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, obviously, yes, we have plans to be over in Europe. Um, as of right now, a lot of our European customers are using our Canadian data center um, as the bandwidth between Europe and Canada is pretty good. Um, and that's how we're kind of uh, attacking that market today. Um, but if you, Jim, if you're interested, you know, follow up after the webinar, and we'd be happy to kind of talk about some of the, the plans that we have in Europe. Fantastic. Uh, Neil, thank you for that background. Uh, and Jim, again, as an attendee, uh, feel free to send in another question if you'd like even deeper information. We'll make sure that uh, Intronus follows up with you uh, during uh, or post-webcast, I should say. Thank you for that question. I see a few more floating in to my inbox here. I'm going to hold a couple questions because I know they actually pertain to some of the upcoming myths. But keep them coming, folks, and we'll work them in. Let's move on over to myth number three. And this is actually... <laughs> The classic topic that never dies, and it has to do with tape. Um, and myth number three is backing up the tape saves money. Um, first of all, let me, let me sort of rephrase the, 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 the myth. Um, from your vantage point, Neil, um, is, is, is tape just dead to begin with? Or is it, you know what, it's clinging on out there, but the, the MSPs are realizing that the bigger growth opportunity is in the cloud storage area? I, I think... It definitely depends where you're located in the country is what I've seen. You know, maybe bandwidth isn't as good. You start to see some, some tape providers out there. But, you know, I joke there's a lot of ads when you go to trade shows, you know, tape is dead. You know, I'm, I'm not uh, that naive. You know, it's not. Um, if you look at enterprises today, a lot of them are still using uh, tape for archiving and retention because it serves that purpose and it's pretty good at it. The change, however, though, is a lot of enterprises have also added disk-based solutions for a much faster recovery time um, than they can achieve with tape. In addition to that, they've also got a ton of money for, um, to be able to put those in solutions in place, and they also have a dedicated team to do it. So the real challenge you know, is how does solution providers like Matt offer those type of solutions and everything I just articulated with tape and disk to disk backup to the small business, um, basically getting the same sophistication that the enterprise has. Um, and how do they make sure that they can get that data back and it, it, it's easily recoverable? Of course, my answer to that is going to be the, the cloud backup solutions. Um, it really allows them to emulate tape and achieve a lot of the, the benefits that the enterprises are getting by having that, uh, that two-tiered solution. Um, some advantages, you know, it's automatic daily backups or even more frequent than that as they see fit. The data is encrypted. Um, you don't have to worry about a tape getting lost with unencrypted data on it. Um, you don't have to worry about it being lost or stolen. And I don't know how many times you'd think we'd be past this years and years. Um, even when we first started the company in 2003, 
you know, you'd get small businesses, oh, my office manager, she rotates the tapes daily. Oh, does she? When's the last time she did it? Oh, about three weeks ago. Right? So it's really not as consistent or reliable as you know, a piece of software that's sitting on the server or the workstation uploading that data automatically. Um, yep. You also don't have to buy tapes. Right? So you know, my summary is it saves the business a lot of time and money um, going the cloud route uh, as opposed to going and investing in really expensive tape drives and tape, uh, tapes because it's not a cheap solution anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've got a true confession. And, and Matt, before I ask you a question, let me tell you my true confession. I have not written about and or covered the tape side of the business in at least 10 years. So, uh, you know, we've been busy building our business. So, uh, you know, I apologize for not knowing more about the recent tape trends. So here's my naive question to you, Matt. Um, as you were building your business, did you ever consider doing the tape side? Um, did you do it in tandem with cloud? Did you abandon tape completely? W what have been your thoughts and your approaches so far? We definitely didn't push tape. Um, there were some um, clients that uh, you know they had requested it and pushed really hard for it. Um, it took a little time to get them to overcome those objections. Once we convinced them and really showed them that the cloud's been, I think, the biggest benefit to the small to medium sized business market. Um, again, talking about how it's automated the backup process and uh, made it easier to restore. The big problem with the tapes was yeah, people weren't taking them home for three weeks or they're forgetting to rotate. And then when it time, came time to restore, it's, if anybody's restored from tape, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not as easy <laughs> um, as it sounds. It's not as easy as backing up, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And and that restore, you know, if you didn't ship it off site, if those tapes are on premise and, and, and your business has been washed away, um doesn't matter if you're trying to restore from tape because there's no tape to restore. So yeah, we've we've heard the horror stories, especially in light of uh you know, I'm from the New York area, so the Hurricane Sandy stories continue to pour in uh in in a sad way, um, in terms of lost data uh for those who kept the data on site. So okay. All right, thanks for the education on tape. Let's keep it moving along now and let's go on to myth number four and we're gonna work in some attendee questions here as well. Some of the attendee questions that came in have to do with this. Um the myth is the cloud is not secure. Um, and, and let me sort of kick this one off by saying, folks, look at our top 100 cloud services provider report. It, just go to TalkingCloud.com, and, and you'll find it right there. It's, it's all over the home page. But um, the reason I bring up that is if you look at those top 100 CSPs and you start to dig down in terms of the vertical markets uh, those CSPs serve, over and over again, it's healthcare and financial services. And the reason I bring that up is if the cloud was not secure, there's no way mission-critical companies in the healthcare and uh, financial services market would go cloud. And ironically, I think those verticals have, have gone cloud faster than a lot of other verticals. So um, this myth of security or insecurity uh, with the cloud I think is dying pretty quickly, but, but you still have those holdouts, those small business owners who, who really want to debate you on this uh, and or the IT managers who want to keep data on premise and want to debate you on this about going cloud. Um, it, Neil, are you finding that the debate is quieting down or, or are those, you know, there's still legions of people who, who just don't believe in the security here? I think there are definitely legions of people that, that don't believe, um, but I think that the percentage is absolutely dropping, uh, to your point. You know, the, I'll pick on the financial example that you brought up. You know, small business comes to me and says, hey, the cloud's not secure. Um, and I look right back and I go, well, do you use online banking? You know, and most of them will tell you right away, um, well, of course I do. Why wouldn't I? Well, great, you're using the cloud. You just typed your social security number, your entire uh, financial data across the Internet. I did? You did, right? So I think a lot of it, really comes down to education. Um, it, it's really also the first step of a lot of IT firms um, in differentiating themselves or distinguishing themselves within the market, being that education and, and kind of bringing the small business to the cloud. Um, I also always say the cloud is not something to be afraid of. Uh, it actually is, offers many uh, cost savings for small business. Um, it's actually enhanced security, not less security as many people think. Um, and honestly, for the price they would have to pay to get the on-premise solutions for the security and, and a lot of the features that you get with a cloud solution. You know, a small business just couldn't afford it. So I actually look as an education piece, uh, and actually they're getting a way better solution by going uh, cloud than they are by going on-prem. 
Yep. Now, a uh, follow-up question for you, Neil. This one comes in from Mark, and Mark wants to know, okay, let, let's assume uh, I get beyond the, the security debate with my customer, and, and they're now interested in cloud. Mark wants to know, do you still recommend using a hard backup in conjunction with cloud backup? Yeah, sure. You know, it, it, I'm still an IT guy at heart, right? So um, I always like to have a backup plan and then a backup to my backup. Um, mm -hmm. At Intronus, we also realize we're a cloud backup solution. Um, one of the greatest things about off-site storage is it's off-site, but one of those things can be, hey, if I need to recover a lot of data fast, it's off-site. So a company like Intronus, and there's other companies that do it, you know, we allow you to keep a copy of that data locally in addition to having it off-site. So that way you can kind of have that, that double backup plan so you can restore uh, in fast in case you need it. Mm -hmm. Neil, similar for you, you using a, you know, sort of a, a hard or on-premise solution uh, in conjunction with a cloud approach, or, or are you um, pure cloud at this point? Would you like to be asking that for me, I think? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Neil. Yeah. No worries. Um, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely, we're we're definitely looking using at the Q&A dashboard here. We're keeping you honest, Joe. We're keeping you honest. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're definitely uh, we're definitely encouraging both. Um, the, the the biggest thing is just the uh, the speed of uh, recovery from uh, on site. Um, the on site's great for you know real uh, a real life disaster, um, and you know a lot of times a lot of things you need to restore from backup are not a full disaster. Mistakes, some other things. So it's nice to have that uh, you know have that readily available. As far as the the, the cloud is not secure. Um, Pretty simple answer to that is just all clouds are not created equal. You know, that's mm -hmm. it's a pretty broad statement. Um, that's just like saying all IT managers are not good. You know, it depends on your IT manager. It depends on the cloud you're with. You're either going to be with a good one or a bad one. So, right. I'll right. keep it short, sweet on that. Yeah. No, those those are great points. Um, one follow-up question for you, Matt. Uh, let, let's compare your business in, say, 2009 to today. In 2009, on a scale of 1 to 10, how loud was the debate about cloud security? And then on a scale of 1 to 10, how loud is it today? You know, has, has the debate quieted down a little bit among your customers? Um, it's hard to say because there's definitely more people debating now than in 2009. 2009, right. it was pretty new. so. You know, we weren't having as many conversations about cloud, or we would have to bring it up. What we find now is we get a lot of inbound conversations and people striking up conversations with us about cloud. So that would be that'd be hard to say. I'm people talking about cloud in 2009, three, four, maybe five. Now, nine or ten. Yeah, understood. So you've got a bigger audience. You're dealing with a bigger audience, so naturally the security topic is going to come up. Understood. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's move on to myth number five. Cloud backup is too expensive. Now, I've got to concede, I haven't heard this myth too often out there. I think people are getting used to cloud pricing models, but, but it does pop up. Um, and, and also, I think some IT managers are worried about uh, runaway cloud costs where, where new cloud services are being turned on by either end users or business managers in the company and suddenly the CIO gets hit, hit with this huge bill that uh, he or she was not anticipating from various departments uh, for cloud services. So I can see that happening. Um, in terms of the expense side of the conversation, Neil, are, how much education do you have to do with your partner base about the expense side, and then how do partners address it with their end customers? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of it definitely comes down to education. And, and the real statement when I hear this, and I'm going to put myself on the perspective of the MSP for, to answer this, is you know, it's usually the objection to price isn't about price. It's really about the value that the MSP is adding, you know, what, what mm -hmm. differentiates them from some of the other solutions that are out there. You, know, you have the typical small business. They're just trying to get a deal, right? I mean, they're going to say it's too expensive no matter what you say, just so you'll give them a discount. But most of the time, um, it, it could be value. Um, and then this is really where I go – as an MSP, and I'm like, all right, I've had a sales process. I've hopefully found the pains to, the, to their needs internally as a company. Um, I've pulled them out. You know, now let's address them. You know, what's the cost of downtime for the business? Uh, is there a lost revenue if the systems are down? Maybe if it's financial or medical, you know, are there any fines? You know, if they were to lose data, um, that, that's huge, right? So it, it's really having these conversations 
um, with the business and really defining you know, what's too expensive and, and really what's the value that the IT firm is kind of adding by providing the service to them. Right. Understood. Um, let me rephrase the question from Matt uh, when it comes to expense. And, and Matt, a lot of attendees, three or four, Jake among them, are asking, rather than worry about expense, I'm more concerned about pricing and packaging. And, and uh, if I can price and package effectively, then expense is not as big as a concern with my, my uh, customers. So any advice you can offer Jake and other attendees in terms of how you're pricing your mounted services? Like, Is cloud backup a separate line item in your services, or is it part of an overall monthly bill that, uh, that uh, your end customers are receiving? Uh, cloud backup is a, a, it's a standalone service. Uh, primarily for us, and it's a it's a good lead-in for clients. It's an easy sell. We're not finding a lot of people complaining about the price um, as much today as they were three or four years ago. There's definitely mm -hmm. cloud storage was a, a lot more expensive, disk space being more expensive. But we're finding that being a less of an objection. Uh, when we do get that, we really we try to compare it to something it could relate to, and uh, typically we compare it to car insurance. You know, you have to have good car insurance. You just have to have it. You know, yep. it's something that you know your business needs, you have to have it. And you know, it's not too bad. So they they, they understand that typically. Okay. Uh, a few more attendees want to know, uh, Matt, have you changed the pricing of your cloud storage over the years? Have you actually raised prices or have you held steady on pricing? Uh we've lowered uh, we've lowered prices over the years. Definitely with um this space being much cheaper. Um, the prices has come down, um, and we've maintained um, good margins, if, if not increased the margins. So it's 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 been good with with the cost of storage going down. It's been great for uh, backup, cloud backup. Good to hear. Fantastic, Matt. And Neil, uh, from your vantage point, as as quote unquote cloud storage prices have certainly come down from uh, from the time uh, Matt launched his business, and certainly from the time that Intronus launched its company uh, in two thousand and three. Um, as those prices come down, do you find that your MSP base keeps adjusting prices for their end customers, or or are they are some of them actually able to raise pricing based on the value they're showing to the end customer? I would say that you know if, if you look at the the ten year span, I think the prices have definitely dropped. I would say recently over the past couple of years, the prices prices have pretty much maintained kind of a, an even or, or remained steady. And to your point, there are a few that still charge or have been able to charge a premium. But again, it's big city markets like New York, Chicago, um, where they're able to charge a premium for additional uh, services and have actually raised prices on the business continuity and the disaster recovery side. So I think it's a mix. To answer your question shorter, but um, I have seen some customers uh, essentially <laughs> still charging what we charged eight years ago, and they're making really good margins doing it. Great to hear. Great to hear. Okay. Uh, attendees, I'm seeing some more questions flow in about pricing, about the Intronus Partner Program, and about on-site versus uh, in-cloud storage. I promise you we're going to get to those questions and more. Keep them coming. I just want to help um, make sure I coordinate those questions with the upcoming slides because I do know that some of them pertain to upcoming slides. So uh, there is a method to my madness, I promise you. Let's move on now to myth number six. And that myth is my data is safe for now. I think there are portions of the, con the country where, where people still believe this. Uh, in the Northeast, particularly in the New York area, I think uh, this myth is dead at this point, thanks to, uh, unfortunately, thanks to things like Hurricane Sandy. Um, I th I'd be interested to see uh, almost a, a grid of the number of partners who have uh, lit up customers in the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, over the last few months um, due to the post-Sandra uh, uh, Sandra fallout. Excuse me. So I think in portions of the country this myth is already dead, but uh, Neil, um, you still find that partners are coming up against it? Uh, absolutely. You know, in the analogy you know, I put out there is, you know, you go to the dentist now for a simple cavity, <laughs> and it's a pretty right. simple fix. Or you can wait, and you're going to need a root canal, right? And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, when you're protecting data, the quicker we do it, um, the risk to the business is a lot less, right? Um, also, the other point that, I, that I'd like to bring up is um, I, ask IT, I ask a lot of the IT firms or MSPs, um, whatever you call yourself, um, you know, would you really want to work with a business that's not listening to your best practice of backing up data? 
you know, at the end of the day, if that business was to lose something, what are you going to say? I told you so. It, it, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to lose that customer, and it's not going to be a good relationship at all for anybody. Uh, the business has lost data, and, and, and you pretty much lost the client. So I really put a lot of um, the, the education of my data is safe for now on, on, on the vendor to help the MSP, but then also the MSP to kind of help the end user so that they understand that they're actually going to pay more money in the long run. You could mm-hmm. pay a monthly, monthly service fee for cloud storage, or if your hard drive dies, you could send it to a data recovery company where prices could be anywhere from five dollars to $15,000 to go and recover that data. Um, so it, it, it's interesting. I think that um, a lot of this is education, uh, and I think a lot of it falls on somewhat of the, the MSP to kind of uh, push kind of their best practices. Um, and I know I'm jumping ahead, but I'll obviously talk about more about this. You know, at the end of the webinar, I'll kind of introduce the Intronus eBook that addresses um, myths like this and objections like this within the sales process and how MSPs can kind of uh, go back to their clients and, and kind of win the sale and, and kind of handle that objection. Fantastic, fantastic. Sort of, uh, you know, I feel like I just heard, but wait, there's more. And, and that more is going to be the eBook at the, uh, the end of the webcast. So folks, stick around for that. And we still have one more myth and a lot more questions to get to. So, but um, Neil, thanks for that background. Um, follow-up question for you, Neil, in terms of my data is safe for now. Um, one attendee, his name is Jerry, wants to know, is it important to carry any sort of liability insurance in case of data loss due to outside intrusion or system failures? Do, do, you, do you find any MSPs out there follow, uh, carrying some liability insurance, or, or is there peace of mind out there? No, absolutely. I think a lot of MSPs um, have and, and should have some type of liability insurance. I mean, there's so many variables out there uh, in the world. Most of the MSPs that I speak to actually do have um, liability insurance for, for uh, data loss. Absolutely. Okay. All right. It's like car insurance, yeah. right? It's just it's yeah, good absolutely. to have. Absolutely. Neil, thank you for that. Matt, from your vantage point, um, I'm wondering – if you have some sort of policy, and I'm not talking about insurance, I'm talking about your sales strategy, do you insist that all your customers have some sort of data protection plan in place, even if it's not with you? I mean, do you want to just make sure that that company is, is well taken care of regardless of, of uh, whether or not they're ready to buy the cloud storage from you? Absolutely. Um, to be quite candid, it's, if somebody were to say that, that's, uh, my data is safe for now, that's kind of foolish from a, a business perspective. So. We absolutely make them um, have some kind of backup solution, or we have them actually sign a waiver um, stating that um, we call it a bad decision waiver. Actually, so that that's a great that's a great approach that forces that decision. I mean, I bet you there's some uh, some customers who are not willing to sign that waiver and then say, you know what, I should get a solution in place. Is it, does that often become a decision point that turns a no into a sale? It it absolutely does. It's uh, it's funny because nobody wants to sign something that says bad decision waiver. So we find that uh, that really <laughs> really forces them into uh, either buying the product or uh, you know you know no, nobody wants to sign that uh, waiver. So. I love it. I love it. I may have to write a blog about that one. That is a great <laughs> tip. What a great way to turn a no into a sale. Fantastic. Okay. So that's myth number six, folks. And here comes myth number seven. And this one pertains to uh, a few attendee questions that we're going to work in. Um, and myth number seven, there's no value in cloud backup. Um, personally, uh, I'm heartbroken to even read a myth like this, uh, considering how much we, uh, coverage we do out there about cloud backup, both on, uh, uh, well, across all three sites. I was going to say talking cloud, but it really is all three sites. Um, I guess the myth is out there. I don't hear it so much because I'm, I'm, I'm writing about cloud all day, and I think the vast majority of our readers are, are ready to go cloud. But on the other hand, um, Neil, you're still hearing the myth, huh? You do, and it's kind of funny. You know, as a co-founder of a cloud backup company, you know, I kind of take this as a as a personal mission to prove them. You know, and as, at the end of the conversation, that you know, uh, there's a ton of value. But then I step back and I realize that a lot of small businesses might not understand some of the things that can happen to their business, right? So I take a step back and we paint the picture, right? And you mentioned this be- earlier in the webinar, Hurricane Sandy. You know, talk about the stories of some of the poor businesses and what happened to them during Hurricane Sandy when it crushed the East Coast, or even tornadoes in, in the Midwest. We've had partners that have been affected and been able to kind of resurrect small businesses. Um, 
even something more close to home that can happen more often is what if an employee deletes some business critical file? You know, does that put you out of business? So it's really articulating these examples to the client so they understand it and they realize, oh, that's why I need something like that or that's why I need that solution. Because honestly, if they've never been through it, um, they, they don't appreciate it. You know, Matt's point is the best customer that buys cloud backup is kind of that one that's been burned, right? So it's how do we educate them before they've been burned to want to invest in a solution so that they're never there. Um, typically, I always say too is can you articulate you know, a customer testimonial or an example from within your own partner base or customer base? Um, reach out to your vendor and say, hey, vendor, do you have some examples that I can use? You know, I might not have a testimonial, but the vendors typically out there will give you examples that you can use to articulate this. So um, a lot of this definitely goes to painting the picture, I guess, for the small business and, uh, by the MSP so that the small business kind of understands why they need it and why there's a huge value in cloud backup. Yeah, well, you set me up really nice here, Neil, because uh, there are a few attendee questions coming in to, to some of the points you raised. So let me, let me uh, uh, work in some of those questions now. Um, Ryan, one of our attendees, wants to know, okay, so you're, you're talking about uh, explaining the value to the end customer out there, uh, but how are you, Intronus, working with cloud service providers, cloud integrators, managed services providers today to help them explain the value to the end customer, part A, and then part B, what's the typical process of working with partners? I mean, how, how do you onboard that partner and then educate them to get the sale? Yeah, sure. Um, most recently, um, you know, I'm plugging the ebook again, but you know, we'll, we'll have an ebook at the end that kind of addresses how they can go about and, and educate the clients. Intronus also offers uh, a lot of marketing materials that we can, uh, you can use uh, within your sales cycle to help kind of close the deal. And if there's something that doesn't exist, reach out to me directly or reach out to our sales team and we'll get you to the right place and, and be able to help you. Um, as far as onboarding and, and how we work with partners, um, you know, it's typical a partner will buy a big block of space from us, but then you need to know what to do with it and how to onboard it. So we have a dedicated onboarding team that literally walks you through the entire process from uh, rebranding our solution to what should you put on the marketing material, how do you price it, how do you package it, and then honestly, how do you install it and support it? So um, we take a lot of pride in our onboarding um, because at the end of the day, I know a lot of vendors say this, but our success really lies within the partner's success. We want to make sure that we onboard them properly. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Here's a follow-up question for you. It comes from Jim, and, and I just want to – this question is good because it helps clarify the Intronus solution. Jim is actually asking, uh, does Intronus have any competitive analysis collateral that compares Intronus to other solutions on the market? And Jim actually mentions a few solutions, but in this case, the, the solutions Jim is raising, I think, are packaged software uh, products that, um, that the MSP would deploy and launch in their own data center. Um, so, Neil, could you clarify for us? I mean, it, you're not asking the MSPs to build out their own data centers and run like an Intronus in shrink wrap package. You're hosting everything for the MSP, correct? Yeah, we are. We're, we're taking okay. that burden of the, you know, having to go out there and buy a solution. Uh, we do all of that for the MSP, absolutely. Okay, um, excellent. And then, so you're a, you're a true cloud service provider, and the MSPs plug into your solution. Exactly. And 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 to answer the first point, Joe, you know, at Intronus we have battle cards, um, and it mm -hmm. sounds pretty funny, but we do. And for some of the consumer solutions that are out there and some other solutions, we do provide these to our resellers. Uh, if you're going head-to-head -head with some other solution that's out there, you know, reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to kind of share those. Excellent. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you so far, uh, Matt and Neil, for answering so many attendee questions. We do have some time left for additional wide open. This is our speed round, folks. Right, wide open time for you to send in some more questions. We're going to make sure we cover as many as possible in our remaining time. And then we'll get to that ebook towards the end of the conversation. So feel free, folks, to uh, flood us with your remaining questions. Um, let me see here. Where do I want to move? Here is one from James. And James wants to know, okay, let's assume you've succeeded in moving the skeptic to cloud backup. Do you have any recommendations on how to maintain momentum with the customer and turn them into a long-term partner? So, you know what? They've taken the first step with you, but how do you make sure they're going to walk with you for a long time, a long time forward? Neil, any thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. Um, Matt, Matt probably might have some answers to that one too. Um, yeah. From from my perspective, it's you know I always look at online backup as kind of that that gateway um, in, into additional services, but it really comes down to having those meetings with the client. You know, 
Uh, it's not a set it and forget it service anymore. You really want to show the value that you are providing, show the amount of times it was backed up. Show, if you had to do a restore, show them that you did a restore and how well it went. Um, so I think it's you know, an ongoing relationship. If, if I'm following the question, Joe, you know, I think it, you, know, uh, you get in there and then you basically month over month you're kind of showing the value uh, of your service to make sure that they realize why they're paying you for the, uh, the service. The, the, the kind of the double-edged sword of managed services is sometimes it's so proactive the client has no issues and then they don't realize what you're doing, right? Um, and sometimes the cloud backup falls into that as well. So we really want to be able to articulate that value back to the client. Excellent. Neil, thanks for that. Matt, let me rephrase the question for you, and, and I'll rephrase it this way. Um, have you created stickiness with your customers over the years? And if so, how did you do that? Yeah, business building is really just about relationship building. Um, so you, know, you definitely have to keep uh, you know, contact with them, and don't just set and forget it. You know, keep in touch. Let them know how it's going. The, uh, the good thing about Cloud Backup, it's a pretty easy sell generally. Um, as far as cloud services go, and it's pretty easy to see the value in it. Um, so you can get back to them after you know, a month or two, show them that there's been some value, show them that it's been stable, they haven't had to do anything, and it makes it a lot easier to upsell them on some other cloud services. Yeah. yeah, so in other words, even though you're working remotely, you've got to have some face time with that customer. You've got to be acting like a consultant, a, an advisor, a, a virtual CIO. Neil, do you find your MSPs uh, establishing that face time, the, the regular check-ins? The successful ones, absolutely. No question. Yeah. They, they definitely have that face time. And it's not, some of it's phone, but a lot of it is actually going on site as well. Not ridiculous amount, but they're doing it. Okay. All right. And, and Matt, uh, building on this line of questioning, um, for, the, for the end customers that you onboard to cloud storage, do you find that their use of cloud storage grows regularly? I mean, is it growing significantly each month with your existing customers, or is it more of a quarterly bump that you start to see? What are the trends you see once you onboard that company um, in terms of their growing use of cloud storage? It's it's a pretty steady growth. We don't see uh, we don't see too many spikes. Um, the the great thing is that you know if we do see some spikes, then you know we have something to to call them for and, and, and see what's going on and check in with them. Um, you know we try to we try to make everything um, that we see uh, an opportunity to talk to them. Um, and you know it's every every disaster or every change or every incident is, is an opportunity in our eyes. So um, but but they're growing pretty steadily. Nothing I wouldn't say you know they're, they're spiking up much. So no. Okay. All right. Great. Um, here's one. Uh, this comes in from multiple people who are asked. And let me rephrase the question because it's coming in from a few people, and I'll, I'll uh, paraphrase it. Um, Neil or Matt, do you have experience in getting sales teams up to speed and incenting them to sell cloud backup? I mean, Matt, when your business was launched, um, did you provide some sort of carrot to get the team going on cloud storage, cloud backup? Or part two is maybe you launched the company and you didn't really have any incentives in place. You got a few years in, you realized you needed some incentives. Have you made any changes over the years? Anything worked well for you? Um, we... What we're doing is we're we do quarterly bonuses. So with uh, with cloud backup and a lot of the cloud services, um, it's not the salespeople that are selling. It's a lot of the uh, the technicians, the uh, the client account managers. They're mm -hmm. uh, they're heavy on the technical side and managing the account. And um, we've we've really enabled them to upsell uh, their clients that they manage on a day to day basis on to other cloud services, backup, spam filtering, antivirus. Uh, all sorts of things, and, and we've incentivized the uh, the technical personnel with quarterly bonuses. So it's 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 been nice to be able to turn uh, technicians and engineers into uh, you know salespeople. Okay, tough to do. And <laughs> a, a follow up question on that: So you're you're instituting quarterly bonuses in some cases. Do you also have some sort of bonus for retention, retaining that customer? Maybe it's a year into that relationship. Um, do, does the sales team and, and or the technicians, do they continue to earn recurring revenue from that deal? Yeah, yeah. Quarterly bonuses are not just on you know what they what they sell, um, but uh, you know what you know the performance of their client and the, the longevity of their client. Okay, excellent, Matt. Thanks for that. Hey, Neil, how about you? Uh, a couple more questions here, then we're going to go to the special ebook offer. But um, in terms of uh, pricing, 
models. A couple of attendees are asking about the biggest mistake MSPs make when pricing cloud backup. Neil, do you see the same error over and over again as you're as you're scanning from one MSP partner to the next, or you know, are the pricing mistakes going down? No, I think I, I definitely see them. I think there was a trend years ago to, you know, bill per gig, which then kind of on an invoice for a small business kind of puts you head to head with the other solutions that are out there. So, you know, from my perspective as a best practice, I always say uh, bundle it in or, or charge kind of a flat rate per month for uh, the service, right? It allows you to kind of articulate your value, and it's also not fluctuating like your electric bill uh, month over month. Some of the most successful partners in Tronus has, you know, include X amount of gigs per user per month or X amount of gigs per device per month, depending how your managed service contract is built in. But being able to bundle it in, um, the customer is not paying additional for it. You're pushing your best practice, and uh, you're also kind of making additional revenue accordingly. So uh, I think you know we also here we go in the ebook. Uh, we also address some of these uh, best practices <laughs> that Intr that Intronus has uh, for how you price it, package it, and bundle it, etc. Got it. Got it. Now um, <laughs> there better be an ebook at the end of this webcast, otherwise we're in big trouble. But the good news I, is, I sure really I sure hope so, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, here's a clarification for a, a few attendees. Ramesh and others are asking about Intronus and your plans to go into other regions of the world. I'm just going to say, hey, folks, let's take that offline because there's so many questions now from attendees saying, hey, you're going to do this in my country, and the list of countries is getting pretty long in my dashboard here. So what I would say, folks, is reach out to Intronus directly or uh, feel free to submit another question right now and just send in your, your country, and Intronus will get back to you with a direct answer in terms of what their plans are internationally. Uh, Neil has already dropped some hints about Europe, so stay tuned. Um, okay, um, here's one more question, and then we'll get to the ebook. Uh, this one comes in from Ralph. Ralph wants to know, does Intronus allow their partners to brand the backup solution as their own? Neil? Yes, we do. Um, you know, uh, someone like uh, Matt, you know, they have a bunch of services that they're offering, and they kind of want to present it to the client as a bundle in the same look and feel. So uh, at Intronus, you know, we're the, we're the biggest company that um, people outside of the IT channel have not heard of, and that's on purpose. Um, we allow all of our resellers to rebrand uh, the backup solution to their own look and feel, email templates, the management portal, uh, so their customers can uh, interface with the, the customer, the company, like D2 Business, the way that they want to uh, with the same look and feel. Fantastic. Matt, do you rebrand it as, as your own, or do you lead with the Intronus brand? Any thoughts there? Absolutely. We rebrand we it. As, because we do offer a full suite of cloud services, we try to keep everything uh, having the same look and feel so our clients have some familiarity with it. And um, you know, that, that was one of the big reasons that uh, we picked Intronus because of the, the uh, private labeling features. Fantastic. Matt, thank you. Uh, Matt and Neil, thanks for all the questions you've answered. There have been dozens, and there's a few more. We'll make sure that uh, attendees will make sure that the Intronus team loops back with you post-webcast. But in the meantime, drum roll, please, the infamous or the famous ebook uh, for attendees, uh, Neil, who would like some more information from Intronus. What are the natural next steps? What would you recommend? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, at the end, you know, they can definitely go to this link that they see. You know, um, I have a few things on the slide. You can write it down. We'll also follow up after the fact for intronus.com slash channel expert hour. But a few facts, you know, as we talked about all the myths today. Uh, almost 50% of all businesses in the IT channel now offer managed services. Data backup is among the most popular IT functions that MSBs move to the cloud, as you saw from Joe's slide in the beginning. Storage software revenues will reach $3.6 billion in 2013. And 93% of companies that lost access to their data for 10 days or more filed for bankruptcy within one year of that disaster. If that doesn't scream opportunity for everyone on this webinar, I don't know what does. Um, what we were surprised about is that MSPs that were participating in an Intronus, a recent Intronus webinar, 32% said that they were not in the cloud backup and disaster recovery market at all. And of those that are in the market, not all are maximizing their investment in cloud backup. Um, for all these reasons, uh, we decided, and I've plugged it probably five times now, I don't know who's keeping count, um, the practical guide to help MSPs and bars sell cloud backup to their customers. It's not written as a sales uh, training manual for a sales professional. It's written for you as an MSP in a bar. Um, if you'd like to receive this manual, uh, point your favorite web browser as you see fit to intronus.com slash channel expert hour, uh, and you can register and we'll get you a copy of it. Um, it is pretty, it is very practical, easy tips that you can use today uh, for selling cloud backup and recovery solutions into your business. 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the one thing I'll add to that is, is you pointed out all these great uh, opportunities to, to really have a cloud uh, backup conversation with customers. Don't forget the consumer opportunity in terms of bringing up the fact, asking, you know, what are you using at home? Well, if you're so confident at home in terms of I need to do some sort of uh, cloud backup solution, shouldn't I have a corporate type solution as well? I think the uh, consumerization of IT is a huge opportunity for you to transition this as an attendee to a, a business conversation. So great stuff. Neil and Matt, thank you very much for all the expertise you shared today. Attendees, thank you for your questions. If you have additional questions for me or for my business partner, Amy Katz, uh, on the editorial or content side, there's my email address, joe.panetary at penton.com. Sponsorship or any type of business development conversations, those go with Amy Katz, the president of Nine Lives, the division of Penton, and it's just amy.com cats at penton.com. So folks, that wraps up today's event. We really appreciate your time, your attention, your questions. Thank you so much. Guest speakers, thank you as well. Have a great day, folks, and good hunting. Take care now.